Hello, Kabayan Natics. In this video, pag-uusapan natin ang characteristics of life. Sa video kong ito na sana makatulong part 1, pag-uusapan natin kung ano ba ang characteristics of life according to biology. Uh, by the way, kung bago ka sa channel kong ito, kindly hit the subscribe button and notification bell para naman updated ka sa mga susunod ko pang biology content na vlogs. Okay, so let's begin the discussion. Biology is the science that deals with the study of life. Pero ano nga ba talaga ang buhay? This may sound like a silly question with an obvious response, pero kung aalamin natin mabuti or kung hihimayin natin mabuti, Ano nga ba talaga ang ibig sabihin ng buhay? Or ano nga ba talaga ang bumubuo sa buhay? Okay, so let's proceed with the first characteristics of life. Number one, life reproduces, grows, and develops. So, i-define natin isa-isa yung salitang reproduction, growth, and development. Pag sinabi natin reproduction, it will be divided into two. Kasi we are now talking about sexual and asexual reproduction. But take note guys, pag sinabi natin sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction, ang dapat lang natin tandaan ay kung anong organism yung involved. Okay? Pag sinabi natin sexual reproduction, the organisms that are involved are the parents. So there are two parents involved pag sinabi natin sexual reproduction. On the other hand, pag sinabi natin asexual reproduction, there is only one parent involved. So, let's proceed with the example of asexual reproduction. Ang asexual reproduction, since one parent lang ang involved yan, ang best example niyan ay mga microorganisms kaya ng mga bakterya. Next, pag sinabi naman natin sexual reproduction, there are two parents involved, male and female. Okay? So, sa male and female, bago magkaroon ng anak or bago magreproduce ng organism, siyempre, kailangan mo na mag-undergo ng sexual intercourse. Okay po? Only applicable for male and female lang para makapag-form ng isang organism. So, sa process, bago makabuo ng isang organism, ay eto yun. So, first, kailangan mo na magkaroon ng sexual intercourse, male and female. And then, after ng sexual intercourse ng male and female, doon na papasok ngayon yung fertilization na tinatawag. Wherein, pag sinabi natin fertilization, this is the process where sperm cell and egg cell meet. Question, Sir Mig, saan po ba nagmi-meet ang sperm cell at egg cell? They meet particularly on the part of female reproductive system ng babae kung saan yun ay tinatawag natin na fallopian tube. At doon na ngayon magmi ang sperm cell at egg cell. Pag nag sila, okay, they will be forming a zygote. Okay? Pagdating yung zygote, as we go on, pag nagpatuloy yung proseso, makakaform na ng embryo hanggang sa makaform ng fetus, okay? hanggang sa makabuo na ng organism. So, those are the some process. Now, let's proceed with the technicalities. Pag sinabi natin technicalities, guys, himayin natin ng konti kung saan ba nagmula yung mga sperm cell at egg cell na binanggit ko kanina. Ang sperm cell ay nagmula sa gonad. Ang egg cell ay nagmula din sa gonad. Pag sinabi natin gonad, yun yung originate or doon nag-originate yung either sperm cell or egg cell. Ang gonad ng lalaki ay tinatawag nating testes at ang gonad ng babae ay tinatawag naman nating ovary. Okay? So the test, the testes and egg cell, they are producing gametes. Okay? In formation of gametes, ang tawag natin ngayon doon ay gametogenesis. Okay, from the word gamet, ang ibig sabihin ay reproductive cells or gametes. And then genesis meaning to say creation, so creation of gametes. So ano nga ba ulit yung dalawang gametes? Kapag gametes na galing sa gonad or sa testes, yon ay sperm cell. Kapag gametes na galing sa gonad ng babae, na ovary, ang tawag natin doon ay egg cell. Next, pag sinabi naman natin formation, pag sinabi natin formation of sperm cell, Ang tawag naman natin doon ay spermatogenesis. Pag sinabi naman natin formation of egg cell, ang tawag naman natin doon ay oogenesis. So, those are some technicalities lang para malaman natin kung ano ba talaga ang ibig sabihin ng reproduction or paano ba talaga nare-reproduce ang isang organism. 
once na ma-reproduce na sila, definitely magkakaroon or mag under ko na ang organism na tinatawag natin na growth. Okay? Pag sinabi natin growth, guys, this is the changes in size and in mass. So, there are changes. Ano example nun, Sir Migs? Pag sinabi natin example ng growth, from infancy to adulthood. Ulitin ko. From infancy to adulthood. Ibig sabihin, hindi naman forever maliit yung bata, di ba? Hindi naman forever maliit yung organism. So, nagkakaroon ng growth, nagkakaroon ng overall changes, di ba? Sa kanyang size and mass. So, that's the meaning of growth. Followed by growth is the word development. Pag sinabi naman natin development, this is the overall changes in organization and function. Halimbawa, your muscles are weak. Mahina pa yung muscles mo. Pero nung simula nung nag-gym ka, okay, nung nag-gym ka, lumakas yung muscle mo. Meaning to say, nagkaroon ng overall changes sa function. Okay po. So that's the example of development. Let's proceed to second characteristics of life. Number two, life requires energy. All living organ organisms must take in energy via food, nutrients, or sunlight to carry out all cellular processes. Kasi ganito lang kasimple yan. In very short explanation, paano makakapag-function ng isang organism kung wala siyang energy? So this energy can be get to the food that we eat. Kasi yung mga pagkain na kakain natin is uh, rich in uh, carbohydrates, protein, fats, okay? vitamins, minerals, etc. So, by the way, those are the biological molecules that will be discussed later on sa future vlogs natin, mga kabayanatics. So, again, ang pinaka-conclusion lang neto, mahalaga sa organism na mag-acquire siya ng energy para siya ay makakilos. Okay? To perform a specific task or function. Okay, third characteristics of life is life evolves. Kapag sinabi naman nating life evolves, ang pinaka-focus nito ay yung salitang adaptation. Adaptation is an inherited characteristics or behavior that enables an organism to survive and reproduce successfully in its environment. There are specific organisms na para sa ganung lugar lang, gaya ng mga polar bears, para sa mga malalamit na temperature, gaya ng mga camel sa mainit, and including, there are also microorganisms such as thermophiles na para lang sa extreme heat na environment. Same as with the organism gaya ng tao, we are capable of adjusting to the environment kasi nag adjust yung pinaka-temperature natin. Halimbawa, galing tayo sa isang lugar na air-conditioned. So, syempre, yung temperature natin ay malamig. And later on, pag lumabas tayo sa classroom na yun, babalik sa pagiging normal yung ating temperature. Why? Kasi, nag undergo tayo ng adaptation. nag undergo ng adaptation yung katawan ng tao. Let's proceed to fourth characteristics of life. Life maintains internal constancy. Ang pinaka-focus niyan or one word na dapat yung tandaan ay ang salitang homeostasis. Homeostasis is the process by which a cell or organism maintains a state of equilibrium or balance. Kasi sa katawan natin, dapat yung sistema natin ay balance. Example niyan ay yung blood glucose level natin. Ang nagkukontrol ng blood glucose level natin sa ating katawan ay walang iba kundi yung hormone na galing kay pancreas. Ang tawag doon ay insulin. Ano bang trabaho ni insulin? Insulin allows the glucose to cross the plasma membrane into the cell. So with the help of insulin, okay, inahayaan niya na makapasok yung mga glucose sa ating cells. Okay, parang sa ganun, yung amount ng glucose sa bloodstream natin ay hindi mataas. Okay, so binabalansi niya yun. Last but not the least in characteristics of life, life is highly organized. Okay, pag sinabi natin life is highly organized, Pag-uusapan natin dito ngayon yung tinatawag natin na levels of organization kung saan aalamin natin yung pinaka-starting point ng organism kung paano o saan siya nagmula. Nagsimula ang organism sa pagiging isang cell. Okay, bago pa yan ma-form bilang organism, magsimula muna yan sa cell. Which is, cells the basic unit of life. It is highly organized unit and within the cells are specialized structures called organelles to perform specific functions. Uh, sa organelles na yun, by the way, uh, i-discuss ko na lang po yan sa iba pa nating mga future blogs. So, nag-start ang organism sa cell, followed by that is the word tissue. When we say tissue, it is the collection of specialized cell. Kaya siya tinawag na specialized dahil there are specific cells para sa si specific lang na organs. Example, muscle cells which is only for the muscles, cardiac cells for the heart, and nerve cells for the brain. Kaya siya tinawag na 
specialized cell. Okay? Yun yung tissue. It is a group of cells. Tissues has four types, connective, epithelial, muscle, and nervous tissue. At yun, i-discuss na lang din natin sa ating future vlogs. Followed by that, if you have already a group of tissues, makakabuo ka na ngayon ng tinatawag natin na organs, which is a composed of main tissue. If your cell example is cardiac cell, makakabuo ka ng cardiac tissue at makakabuo ka naman ng heart. Another example, if the example is uh, brain cell, makakabuo ka ng brain tissue at makakabuo ka naman ng brain. So, there are specific cells para lang sa specific organs. If you have the organs, proceed na tayo sa organ system which is a group of organs. Kanina nabanggit ko yung brain cell, naging brain tissue, naging brain, at yung pinaka system niya na mabubuo ay particularly yung central nervous system. If you have the uh, if you have the heart, the cardiac cell, the cardiac tissue, the heart, now makakabuo ka ngayon ng cardiovascular system. So meaning to say, there are specific organs para lang sa specific system. At pag nabuo na natin yung cell, tissue, organ, organ systems, unti-unti na na masasabi natin na tayo ay isa ng ganap na organism. So, organism is a single living individual. Okay, that can react to stimulus, respond, and grow. A few minutes later. Finally, mga kabayan natin, natapos na natin ang una ka una unahang episode ng aking Sana Makatulong Part 1 sa aking vlogs dito sa aking YouTube channel. Sana ay natuto kayo kahit papano at nakapagbigay ako or nakapagdagdag ako sa inyo ng additional information. By the way, uh, yung mga pinaliwana ko sa inyo ay basic information lang. Uh, in fact, marami pa kayong makikita sa, or masasearch sa Google, sa internet, no, sa other references, kaya yung mga libro, kung ano ba talagang ibig sabihin ng characteristics of life. Yung mga pinaliwana ko sa inyo, mga kabayanatics, very very basic lang yun. At sana abangan nyo yung susunod ko na content para sa ating Sana Makatulong Part 2. Maraming salamat, Kabayanatics. Hanggang sa muli. God bless you.